How do we listen, amplify, and include? Have you ever sat in a restaurant, and it's a crowded restaurant, it's really loud, and all of a sudden you hear your name, right, out of the noise? What happens? How, how come you can all of a sudden hear your name over, over the din? Well, our brains take in a huge amount of information, but in order to make us sane, they filter a lot of it out. And then there's special neurons that only let in information if it's surprising. They're the surprise neurons. How did we create surprise neurons from an organizational perspective? And this is how trash cans are saving lives in hospitals. So I'm sorry this is a little gross, but anybody recognize what this is? Um, this is antibiotic-resistant staph infection. And we've known how to treat this since the 1800s. You wash your hands. More people die from um, the spread of MRSA, antibiotic resistant staph infection, than from HIV AIDS every year. Hospitals like the Albert Einstein Medical Center in Philadelphia have realized that people are dying because of MRSA. So they put up signs reminding people to wash their hands. Anybody thinks that these signs worked? So they put up bigger signs, right? Colorful signs. Anybody thinks that those worked? So they put up kind of funny signs. And those didn't work. And ultimately, they sent doctors to half-day-long trainings about how to wash their hands. None of it worked. Anybody, any, any of this sound familiar, by the way? Information does not change behavior. I'll repeat it. Information does not change behavior. If it did, none of us would smoke, all of us would floss. So instead of just jamming more information down at people, what we did is we assembled everyone in the hospital from the head of infection control to this guy, Jasper, who was the janitor. And in one of the meetings, Jasper had an observation kind of something that surprised him. He said, you know what, in the unit where there's a lot of staph infection, the garbage cans are empty. And we're like, well, that's really weird. And we have this model of nothing about me without me. So rather than talking about those people and them, we went over and we talked to people in that wing and said, why are you using gloves? And I said, well, the people, the nurses in this wing have extra small hands. And this hospital is so cheap that they don't give us enough extra small gloves. And we said, well, what if we give you more extra small gloves? And they said, well, of course, we'd use them. So the janitor busts out a pen, writes down his number. Every time they run out of extra small gloves, they call him. It's small incremental changes like that that reduced the level of hospital-acquired infection by 70%, 70% in one year. Now, it's not to say that every wing should have had extra small gloves. Nor is it to say that Jasper, the janitor, should be made the head of infection control. <laughs> but it's this continual process of how do we run our half hour, hour long meetings, and how do we listen to the voices inside the room that might have the answer depending on the context of the situation. 